Rich family disowned me for marrying my wife, but one year later, her business is booming and now they reach to us for advice because their business is failing and they need help. So, I, 34M, come from a business family. The company was started by my great-grandparents and has been feeding the next generations, meaning us, extremely well. It wouldn't be a stretch to say that we've been comfortable and have a good name in the market. My father and my uncle jointly handle the business. Talking about our family dynamics, we have never been very expressive, or warm, and I've grown up seeing my parents follow the guidance from my grandparents, no questions asked, and so I did the same as well. I rarely talked about anything at my house besides the common pleasantries and my grades. Even though I never felt a lack of money, I didn't have any long-lasting friends, which kind of worked for me because I worked extremely hard and got into a prestigious business school to take over the company in the future. That's where I first met my wife, Evie, 32F. Evie was the complete opposite of me, present at every event, taking charge. She took notice of me in class and decided to get me out of my shell. She was the only friend I had, and she did help me a lot during uni. I came out a different person after graduation, and I had known all along that she was the one for me. When I asked her out, she said she reciprocated my feelings, and that's how our relationship began. I introduced her to my family, who seemed happy with her until she left. That's when they began gossiping about her, saying that she wasn't from a big business family and didn't match our standards. I was getting angrier with each passing moment and wished to call them out, but decided against it in order to focus on more important stuff. The very next day, I took Evie on her favorite hike and asked her to marry me. She was surprised by it happening all of a sudden, but I assured her I knew she was the one and was sure about it after seeing her with my family. She said yes. To be honest, it was after meeting Evie that I realized how pretentious my family was, and so it wasn't out of the blue that I didn't care about their opinion. I texted everyone in the family group about the engagement. They didn't say much, because that was our dynamic, but didn't say anything bad, which was a positive sign. Evie was a new entrepreneur. I won't be revealing what the startup was about to not give away our real identity, but it was something extremely new and uncertain, like Scrub Daddy before Shark Tank. She had been extremely passionate about her business and had saved money working two jobs while we were in college to start her business. I offered her some financial help, but she denied it, saying it was her thing, and the only help I could give was support. My family, on the other hand, had been bugging me about the wedding and wanted to make it a spectacle for their high-class society. They thought Evie's parents must have been of high standing to be able to send her to my business school. But once they realized that Evie was adopted and came from a very humble background, they quickly backed off and suggested that I convince her to not talk about her parents at the now big reception they were planning to have instead of the wedding. At this point, I didn't really want my family to be a part of the wedding. Now, Evie has been raised by great adoptive parents, and she values family a lot. I didn't want to break her heart by telling her what my family actually wanted for our wedding, so I told her a little white lie, that I wanted to have our wedding somewhere alone, much like eloping. She obviously did ask about our friends and family's involvement, but I somehow convinced her by saying that this was a dream of mine and it was with the permission of my family. She called her parents, who sounded happy and fine with this. So, the next weekend, we went to a city famous for eloping and got married. I called my mom after the wedding to inform her about it, and the news spread like wildfire. None of my family members were impressed by my stunt, but for the sake of their reputation, they acted like it was planned all along. After our honeymoon, Evie went to stay with her parents for a few days, and I went to stay with mine. As expected, I got an earful for marrying without their permission or presence. I usually am the quiet one in the house, but this time, I spoke and reminded them how they talked about Evie, taking a stand for her. They must have realized I wasn't as docile as they thought, and getting caught in their hypocrisy shut them up good. They didn't talk about it much after that and quickly shifted focus to the big Christmas celebration they'd be hosting as a replacement for my wedding. I didn't want to be a part of this for show celebration as well, but agreed to it thinking of the connections Evie could make for the future of her business. My mom, my aunt, uncle's wife, and her son, Frank, 25M, were in charge of planning the whole event. The event was in a month, and I realized it was the right time for me to tell Evie about my family's opinion of her, to make her aware of anything that might come through. I feared that things might go south for us, but to my surprise, she said she had known about it from the moment they met and thought that I would end our relationship after that night. But my proposal made her trust me even more, and she assured me she was ready for whatever was coming. I was happy with this and explained to her how to leverage her position at the party for the future. We didn't realize when a month had passed, and it was time for the big celebration. We went and were welcomed by Frank. We decided to meet my parents, grandparents, and the rest of the family at first, as they were the hosts. They did welcome us, but very coldly. 
My dad didn't even hug me while congratulating me on the wedding. I looked at Evie and she gave me a look of assurance that we would get through this. The Christmas party was a partial success because Evie's business was able to catch a few eyes. But a lot of things went unexpectedly bad. After everyone other than the family left, I realized that we hadn't talked to anyone except Frank from the whole family that night. This night was also supposed to be the night the usual talk about handling the business happens, so I presumed that I would finally get some position at the family company. So, when I finally went to my mom to talk to her, she asked me and Evie to sit on the sofa and wait for everyone to come. When my father came, the ambience suddenly turned stressful as he began telling me how my uncle was going to get the charge of the company for the time being, because he had new and better ideas to expand the business, whereas I have been too busy with my marriage. I thought it was unfair and tried to explain to them how I have always been there and have been specifically preparing for the role for the last two years, to which my dad responded that my seriousness about the job was well reflected when I decided to marry Evie, not caring about their reputation and associating our family name with her and her failing business. Everything was happening all of a sudden, and as angry as I was about them berating Evie like this, I still couldn't get over the thought of not being a part of the family business I had been preparing for since childhood. I wasn't able to gather my thoughts and went out to get some air, with my mother following. Evie was still there in front of my dad and confronted him, asking if this is how they treat family. My dad laughed in her face and told her she and her husband may try becoming a part of the family once she is on par with them. Evie was extremely flustered and had no response, so she stormed out as well, taking me with her back to our home. The next day, when I was able to make sense of what had happened, I called my dad again and asked if I could talk to him privately because my intention was not to get a job at this point but to remind him that no one talks to my wife like he did. He denied it and said everything that was supposed to happen had happened yesterday. I tried calling everyone after that, but only my mom responded and begged me to not escalate this issue anymore. I talked to Evie after this, who was also pretty broken with my family's remarks, but suggested that we should move on. I agreed and chose peace instead of petty revenge. I was in a pretty bad state for a few days over losing the thing I had worked for my whole life, after which Evie offered me a high PR position at her company, which I accepted to move on. We did get a few calls from my mother over a few months after this fight, to check on us, but it stopped soon, and we were in no contact with our family for almost a year now. My not getting into the family business was a bit suspicious at first for people who knew us, but because my family hadn't disowned me publicly, the rumors stopped over time. During this one year, I helped Evie with her connections in the market, and her business started to boom once it found the right pace. With a larger market and the correct connections, her business was growing at a lightning pace, so much so that she was named as one of the rising entrepreneurs by a magazine. This also means that we were doing extremely well financially now, with profits finally coming in good. Because the business was doing good, Evie and I were planning to focus on ourselves and decided to give ourselves a digital detox vacation in the mountains. When we came back and looked at our devices, they were flooded with calls and messages, so both Evie and I decided to get to them. Evie's phone had quite a few missed calls from my mom, a few voicemails, and an email. Evie decided to open the email first instead of calling back, thinking something bad might have gone down. The email mentioned that mom was missing us and wanted to have lunch with just Evie to catch up. Evie was thrown off by this and decided to call my mom, asking her why she was trying to contact her now after a year of humiliating her. My mom responded that it all had been a mistake and they wished to sort it out. Evie said she'd have to talk to me about it, but mom asked her to not do that and to meet her first. Evie thought my parents must have realized their mistake and were going to offer me the leading position in the company, and because that position had meant a lot to me in the past, she decided to go and meet my mom. My mom treated Evie with the utmost respect, which was very unusual in comparison to what had happened at the Christmas celebration. Mom asked about me and how I was doing and congratulated Evie on her newfound success. Evie behaved nicely and asked the purpose of the meeting. My mother then told her how my dad and uncle wished to get her input and advice on their business after she had done so well with hers. Evie was shocked to hear that my family was trying to get in touch just to use her skills. She still kept her calm and told my mom that she wasn't going to talk to anyone in my family without me and that she'd get back to my mom soon, and left. Evie and I got into a pretty huge fight that night because of her going behind my back to meet my family, the people who humiliated both her and me. I told her that no wish of mine was more important than her respect and that there was no way I was going back to them after they decided to cut us off. Evie said she would drop a text to my mom tomorrow that we wanted nothing to do with her or their family. Now at this point, I should have acted like an adult but decided to take my petty revenge. I told her I wanted my family to feel shameful for how they had treated me, so I asked Evie to text my mom that we were ready to meet them, but only if we got to talk to everyone together. 
Evie wasn't very happy about it but decided to stay out of my and my family's dynamic and texted my mom the next day. We went to our family's home that weekend and were treated like royalty. My dad even called me his golden son for marrying Evie and making her a part of the family. I blatantly asked my dad what he wanted from us after a year of shunning us because we didn't match their financial status. He then began telling us how the business wasn't doing so well because my uncle's plan of starting different ventures had failed and led to major losses. He said he wanted me to take over the company now, and with the help of Evie, take it back to its glory. I wanted to laugh in his face but composed myself somehow, and asked him why he thought we would help him. He wasn't expecting this and fumbled a few things, including because we were family. I reminded him how he treated me, his own son, and my wife like trash because we didn't fit our family's standards. I got up and told him to ask for help from my family once he was at par with us, and stormed off with Evie before he could say anything. I asked Evie to block my mom, which she did, and now my mom and everyone else have been blowing up my phone with texts, blaming me for making a joke of their financial situation instead of helping them out. Even Evie says that I should have just said no instead of having a laugh at their misery, and now I do think I might have gone a step too far. Update 1, firstly, thank you to everyone who supported me in the comments, and to those as well who called me out on the last incident. I have realized that I was an a-hole for taking the extra effort just to humiliate my family, but after all, they had put me and Evie through so much, I couldn't miss the opportunity. I do realize I was wrong, but there is no way I'll be apologizing to them, which some of the very irrational comments mention. Anyway, here's the update on the whole situation. So, since the last time, my dad has fallen ill, which my family is blaming on my ruthless remarks, but it was later revealed it was just the flu he caught during his business trip the previous week to a colder state. I haven't really responded to my mother's calls but have been enjoying her voicemails, where she claims that they never had the intention to shun us out and cared about us even when we were in no contact. I do want to remind her about her care gone missing for that one year, but anyway, I do not wish to get into petty arguments anymore. Evie has been a bit stressed about the whole scenario and thinks it is because of her that my family and I are on such bad terms. I keep reassuring her almost daily that it isn't her fault that they are so cold and heartless, and I would choose her over anyone, any day. Over the coming weeks, the calls and texts weren't reducing, with now even my grandparents begging me to come back home and sort things out for good. It's kind of funny how none of them ever visited our house to convince us when they very well knew our address, but anyway, I decided to call Frank and ask him to take control of the situation because he was the only one who was rational enough out of that bunch. I called him and he apologized to me for whatever I had been going through and told me he would try to ask everyone to not bother me anymore. He added this one thing out of the blue and told me that my dad was planning on kicking me out of the family and company for good because of my attitude problem. I didn't really respond to that and immediately called Evie, who was out for work. I told her that although I had made up my mind to not go back to my family and their toxic ways, it still affected me that they were planning on kicking me out. Evie told me to calm down and wait for her to come back home to discuss this, and that's what I am doing while writing this update. Update 2, so, when Evie came home, she sat me down and asked me if I wanted to rebuild a relationship with my family, and even if I did, she would be in full support because she knows the importance of having a family. I answered that although it would feel weird to not actively be a part of my family and their shenanigans, I think I'll be able to fare well on my own without them, and I still have a family to call my own, which was her. She was still willing to help my family, but I strictly asked her not to because I knew they would walk all over her once their purpose was fulfilled, and she'd end up like a doormat. She assured me she wouldn't, and that was that. In the next few days, Evie had gotten a missed call from Frank. She was surprised as to how he must have gotten her number, and unlike the last time, she decided to tell me straight away. We both sat down together and put the call on speakerphone to listen. Frank picked up the call and got straight to the topic. He told Evie that our family business's name had been ruined in the market due to them being unable to make payments on time and that only she could help bring back the credibility by financially helping them and associating with their company's name. She told him clearly that after what happened when we met, there was no way she was willing to involve herself in all this. Then Frank decided to pull out the big guns and asked my grandfather to talk, apparently he was on the conference all along. He tried to convince Evie at first, but his tone soon changed as he began threatening her to convince me to come back home with her, or we both would not only be kicked out of the business but also the inheritance. I could feel Evie getting uncomfortable and decided to cut the drama right then. I took the phone from her and asked Grandpa to use these threats on someone who was scared, which should have been them because of their deteriorating condition. He started to sob hearing my voice and began apologizing, but I told him it was too late for apologies and that they would face legal action if he ever decided to threaten me or my wife again and cut the call. Then I quickly brought Evie some water to calm her down. After this call, 
It was clear that our decision to go no contact was absolutely right, and that's what we're planning to do from now on. Hopefully, my family will get the sign and will stop bothering us, but that seems unlikely. Update 3, I know this update has been long due, and I come bearing good news. But before that, I'd like to mention a concern that was brought to light in the comments of the previous update. A lot of you mentioned that my grandfather's connections, because he was in the business for so long, could have been a threat to me and Evie, but as I mentioned previously, their business was doing extremely badly right now, due to which their credibility has reduced to zero. Someone also mentioned that I should have called him out on social media and let him have a taste of how bullying feels like. But since the last time I humiliated my family, I have decided to not go after them unnecessarily, as they're already not doing well, and be the bigger person. So I think my warning to my grandfather worked for good because my family had not contacted me since then, it has been a few months now. Also, Evie is pregnant, and we're elated about becoming parents soon. The confrontation with grandpa actually worked out for good because now Evie could have a stress-free time while carrying our child. We haven't told anyone yet, so I guess this post can act as the announcement. Things have been going fine for a few months now, with the business doing well as well. One of our investors was this businesswoman we met at the Christmas party my family threw. She had always supported Evie and was like a guardian angel to her, so we had a good relationship with her. One day, she came to our office and asked for both Evie and me together because there was something urgent she wanted to inform us of. We met her and got to know something we hadn't seen coming. She told us how my family was doing terribly and no one wanted to engage with them anymore. A lot of speculations about me joining Evie's company instead of my own family's business had also raised a few eyebrows, and people weren't buying their excuses. She told us that they decided to use the next best tool at their disposal, our relationship. She said that they've been going around telling people that Evie was their daughter-in-law and had invested in their venture. They had been able to get a few people on their side by using Evie's name. When they talked to our investor about it, she felt something wasn't right, so she decided to check with us if it was true. Evie couldn't believe their audacity and how they were so blatantly using her name when they were refused that privilege quite a few times. We let our investor know that she was right about them fraudulently using Evie's name and thanked her. Before leaving, she suggested that we take quick action on it because it wasn't too good for our name to be associated with theirs in case anything goes south. We thought about it for a day and came to the conclusion that it was best if we publicly announced that we had no relationship with them anymore. Evie asked me to email Frank about it once so that they're ready for the big blow. I didn't want to do that but ultimately complied with my pregnant wife. I told him in the email that I knew how they were using our name without our permission, an action that should be pursued legally, but instead, I was going to spare them their misery and just make an announcement of no association with them. I got a reply from him within just a few minutes, in which he mentioned that I was free to do whatever I wished because there was no way he could convince our parents to not use Evie's name. The next day, I made a huge post on my social media, making it very clear on behalf of Evie and me that we weren't associated with my family anymore and that whoever decided to conduct business with them in our name would be responsible for themselves. We knew this was going to cause a lot of chaos, so we had trained our PR team and managers well to answer questions, if directly asked, which didn't include many details about our conflict with our family, as Evie and I decided to not address anything past this. Things did go south as we expected. The post gained a lot of impressions, with people asking all sorts of questions and making up stuff. My dad and uncle did try to calm the fire down from their end by making a fake claim that Evie's and my social media were hacked and it was false, but once people got confirmation from our end, my family's business tanked like never before. I wasn't pleased at their downfall, but they had brought this on themselves. The situation was a lot to handle, so I suggested Evie take a few weeks off, to which she agreed and went to stay with her parents. I am glad Evie wasn't taking the heat, because after the revelation and incurring a lot of losses, my family decided they had nothing to lose and went crazy after me and her. They decided to share their side of the story, in which they claimed that I had abandoned the family after stealing funds from them and used them to start Evie's business. They said they spared me a legal case back then considering me family and now were kicking me out of their inheritance. Funnily enough, I didn't have to do anything because one of their investors called their bluff, asking for proof of it all, and they weren't able to provide anything, because obviously, the incident wasn't true. Things have been quiet after my family's self-sabotaging Facebook post, and Evie will soon be back at work. She was off the grid, so it would be fun to explain to her what went down. I hope this doesn't take a toll on her and we are finally able to move on and begin fresh. Update 4, I am writing this update after a few months, and fortunately, it will be the last. So, when I explained to Evie the whole exposing me fiasco, she had a good laugh about it. Although, my mother had known someone mutual and got to know about Evie's pregnancy. She tried to talk to us by calling our office number, 
because she's blocked on our personal phones, and tried texting and emailing us, but when nothing worked, she showed up at our house at night, uninvited. We let her in, looking at her condition because she was drunk beyond measure. She told us that after our announcement regarding them, the business hit rock bottom, and they had to shut down a lot of it just to pay back debts. That had caused a rift between my dad and my uncle, and now they were living separately, with my grandparents shifting to their country home. She kept begging me and Evie to give her another chance to at least be a part of their grandchild's life. She also mentioned that dad was remorseful about treating us like this too, but she was willing to leave him if it meant we could make her a part of our life. She was clearly too drunk to understand what she was saying, so I reminded her how she was backing my dad and uncle when they were pulling Evie's name through the mud and that she deserved to be with those people again. She did throw a tantrum, but we decided to call an Uber to her new address, which we found in her diary, and wrote a note asking her to not contact us anymore. A few days later, we also got a text from Frank asking if he could get a job at our company because things were rough at home and he wished to learn from Evie. Frank was a good kid, so we decided to ask him to send us his resume, on the only condition that our family wouldn't get to know about it. He agreed. About Evie, she is in her third trimester now, and work is taking a toll on her, so we both are suggesting moving to another city for some time to start fresh in the actual sense. We've chosen a city close by to not affect our business and will begin the shifting process soon.